congratulations on your new documentary, A New Kind of Wilderness. Thank you very much. Nice talking to you. Nice talking to you, too. And more of a congratulations is being showcased at the Sundance Film Festival, one of the most prestigious film festivals in the world. I mean, how do you feel about that? I don't know if I, I, I don't know if I really can believe it. It just felt like a Sundance has also always been this big dream. We're always talking about joking about, yeah, we're going to Sundance and now it's actually happening. So I just need to like, I, I need to do as my real live in the moment and understand what's happening because it's, it's really, it's really big for us and for me and for the family and every, yeah, all of us involved in the film. Uh, yes, especially for our documentary films. I mean, it put, put, puts you folks on the map uh, for more film festivals and, and um, audiences uh, down the road. But uh, tell us uh, what actually sparked you to make this documentary in the first place. Yeah, it was um, 10 years ago I discovered Maria's blog. Um, she had this beautiful blog, Wild and Free, about her family like living off the grid, taking this intimate photos of her of her children and um, and writing the story to it and I I tried to make a series of their life of their life project or I, I didn't try to make a series I, I filmed it for a day and I made the two minute pilot and it didn't come through and for all those years after I was like talking had um, contact with Maria and was like oh I need to tell something because all, all of the things were happening she was just keeping up updating her blog and then then she passes away and I was like I I need to still to tell this story but now I'm going to tell it after after she's dead and uh, and it's 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 quite the film has different layer, layers and and has this mourning side and and how they deal with loss and everything but I think it still has this elements of her life project and her photos and stories in it that was my intention in the beginning so yeah so how how did you approach the family and convince them to uh you know to do to do to be part of their your your project after Maria's death? Um, because they already knew that Maria wanted me to make a film. I think that um, Nick trusted me and wanted like that's like because I wanted to keep her her um, ideas or vision in the story, and I think he found that really nice. Even though, of course, it was. It was hard for him filming his family in this process, his children and everything. But I think that he saw that he trusted me and he trusted that it was better to let's do this instead of not doing it. So, and we used a lot of time together talking and, you know, and he had, he, he had his ups and downs in, in being in a film and his children, but um, we have, we have a good relationship. And I think that was essential for, for him wanting me to come in and, and tell their story. What what did you find uh, most fascinating about this family um, as as a subject for your film? I I think it was like the the earthiness or the way the children just like really is natural like around each other around the nature around. I just had this when they go and and it's not. Maybe it's like such a part in the film, but it's just like filming the kids just going up in the trees barefoot with the axe, taking down some pins and going down like all natural. It's I think that's that's the fascinated me. Um, and also what fascinated me in the bigger picture was that they just reinvented their life. They they made a conscious choice on how they wanted to live, not based on what society expects, but based on what they wanted. And that was really inspiring. I don't say that everybody should live off the grid. I just say that. I want to like, how do I live my life? We're such a short time on this planet and do we make a conscious choice when and how we live? And and I and I and I and I like how, how you actually, you know, approach it, the, the different subjects of a different the different family members towards grieving because it every, everyone has their own way and own um own reaction to grieving. Yeah, yeah, for sure. And that was also because that, that's that's the storyline you know you have this wilderness and you have this alternative lifestyle on the side but but how the um, how the children different stages of the life and how they how they dealt with it I think that was really interesting and also that they share this with me uh, it felt really uh, something unique and and to be a part of how they came out with it eventually when 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 you did this uh project was it a coincidence that uh 
it was a transition time of their lives, um, you know, going to, you know, having to move, going, you know, putting the kids into schooling and so on. It was all, it was the consequences of Maria's passing and that made the turn of events because he couldn't keep the farm because he didn't afford to have it alone by himself and then he needed to move and then he needed to get a job so he needed to put them in school so it was it was all this um, um consequences of her passing then he needed to change the lifestyle even though he really tried to hold on to it so so that was uh, i knew that it would come changes of it but i didn't know i didn't know the next step and i don't know if he knew them himself before it happened they moved to England and then uh, no they went to England on holiday and then suddenly he decided they maybe would, they would stay I think that was that just came up and I need to just follow follow along with it and Ronya for example when she decided to move to northern Norway to study that was also like they yeah. came to her and I was like okay we need to follow the path and just see what it comes so what is your approach uh, towards interviewing um you know a gr grieving um a family like a, like this? I mean, how, how do you make them more comfortable to be open to you? Um, I, I think it's, it's about spending time with them, um, spending time also without camera, just talking with them, see how they are in different moments. And and I'm, I learned when, I think because when they had their time, like they celebrated Maria's birthday, visited her grave. I think that was a natural moment when they talked about her and also a natural moment for me to talk individually about them um, and I tried not to intervene too much with it when they weren't doing other stuff and just and just be part of it then um, but it was also always be very respectful I think that was the key word and um, and sometimes I maybe overstepped and that was they would for sure let me know and that we would talk about it and uh, and make sure that I didn't, didn't do it again how long did you uh, follow the family for, for your production? Uh, oh, three years, more or less. Yeah. So during the, during the three years, you, you, um, you, you notice uh, a lot, a lot of changes. I mean, you, you capture very, very, you know, intimate moments like uh, the oldest daughter, uh, you know, cutting her hair. And, and I could tell, you know, as the hair get, gets longer and longer uh, through, through your film. Yeah, and I I had so so many more scenes. She she's actually taking a tattoo on her wrist, like um, I'm so proud of you. That was from her mom, and she also tattooed like a wolf and a falc, like from her. And it was really beautiful moments. But eventually, you know, you had to just choose the ones that that you you couldn't have them all. But they let me in, and they were really like open. We had, and I think it was also that they knew that I would respect them, and I respected even though they let me film in the end it was their story and I was I would be respectful if they if it was something they didn't want to have in it um so I think they trusted me on that and then I'm, I'm very I was very happy to to gain their trust now for um for some of the uh you know uh, Mar Maria's uh you know old, older footage and um, and the stuff that she actually says how, how did you gather that or was that something that uh that you previously did with with the with the pilot. No, I um yeah. she had this yeah. vlog. Yeah. No, I, I hear my echo. <laughs> I don't know. No, it, it went away. Um, she had this blog, so I I picked out all what she said in her blog, like all my favorites and everything that I felt really stood out, and it was so many <clears throat> I wanted to share and use. But when it comes to like the final editing, I chose the ones that basically connect with the story in the present time. So when talking about when they started school, she talked about institutions. When Rania was moving to Northern Norway, Maria was talking about she and Rania going to Northern Norway and then Maria was from Norway. So you could understand um, how she was involved in their, their um, in what they did and, and why it was hard for him, for example, to take them to school because it was a part of the life project. So, so it needed to connect with the story in present time. And uh, then I had an actress to read her voice because um, it's it's her words, but it's an actress reading them. Now, was, was it a challenge um, when, when, you, when you were filming 
this uh, documentary because I, you know, the, uh, the the family sometimes they you know they 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 mainly speak English and then they switch over to different language. Was that challenging for you? Um, was it all purposeful that you wanted to basically have it filmed in English and sometimes switch over? No, they they controlled it. And when I talk to them, I would talk to them in Norwegian because that was natural for me. And I asked Nick to, to answer me in English because that was his native tongue. And he would, of course, be more, it would, it would be better for him to talk in English. Um, and I think in our time, we're so, it's so international, you're so used to having like parents from different sides of the world. I think it's, I think we accept it. And I think it's um, more a strengthen of the film uh, than it was could weaken the film. And and it, it would I would never force them to speak English or Norwegian because I knew that it would go to an international audience that would be very a very strange way to do it. So I just let it flow naturally what was natural for them. Most most excellent. So uh, what, what's up next uh, um, for you? Um, Sundance? <laughs> no, I'm, uh, I'm having, um, I'm developing a, a documentary about, um, it's about the adoption scandals going on in Europe where I follow a, a South Korean adopted girl who's um, suing the Norwegian government. Uh, and I also have make this family documentary where I follow my own kids in like a true crime. They're going to find how who is uh, behind a mystery Christmas gift that my family has received for 25 years. Hmm. So, uh, yeah, so it's a different, quite different projects from my prior ones, but exciting in different ways. What what fascinates you about the, the human story that you, you, you love uh, documentary uh, filmmaking? I think, you know, being able to come into other people's lives, sharing their stories, small, small stories that can be, that tell so much more, you know, it's not black and white. It's not, I think fiction sometimes it's just, you <clears throat> know, all these blockbusters, you have the villain, you have the everything. I think human mind is so much more, more complex. And I think that's with documentary that I really eager to share complex stories with, with complex characters because people are complex and uh, and just be able to be with them and share share the story. I think that's really interesting, and I'm I'm curious about people and other way of life. So that's yeah, inspiring me. Do Do you keep in touch with the with this family now? Um, do you Do you know how they're doing? Yeah, I actually got a message right now from them, and they 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 will all go with me down to Sundance on um, on Thursday so they're really really excited and I think it will be great to be there with them and to experience the film and the cinema with them it will be <clears throat> it will be amazing that would be amazing well let, let, let me leave with uh, one one last thought as uh, as audiences at Sundance and hopefully uh, more film festivals and more audience will have a chance to watch a new kind of wilderness what is the one most important take you hope they walk away with after they watch your film do you mean like a take from the like, film like, yeah a take from the film or what they look they should like learn after watching mm -hmm. your film i i hope they manage to no matter how they live or, or in which country they come from or what language i i hope they can connect the story with their own life and just you know how do i choose to live my life and how have I made a conscious choice I think I think that's that would be great if people can take it in and maybe I don't know look the people you love in your eyes and just appreciate the small things well said well said and I know you're going to appreciate this the small and big things when you have to <laughs> yeah. uh, for yourself so thank you very much uh, for speaking to us about a new kind of wilderness it, it, it oh. is a touching uh, film thank you very thank much thank you for having me on the kind word thank you you're welcome bye now bye